how we collect the data on the capabilities is like a social science problem. And we do all the right things with like all of the surveys and metrics and stuff, but like how we decide what goes into the questions that we're asking is purely based on our kind of experience as, you know, contributors within teams, as well as working with customers who themselves are, are dealing with these capabilities. Hey, I'm Steve McGee. I'm a reliability advocate at Google Cloud. Uh, I was an SRE for a long time, and now I help people build more reliable systems on the cloud. Hi, I'm Kyle Campbell, founder of C2Di. We are a modern development platform that helps companies measure the software developer experience. Been an entrepreneur for and a self-taught software engineer for a long time, and love to help developers build internal developer platforms. How are you applying this research in your role at Google? So the, the, the best thing that we can do about this is we can, um, apart from just informing people of the metrics and the ability to measure themselves in these like unambiguous ways and to show these trend lines over time, the best thing we can do is we can show them these abstract capabilities. You know, are you doing, you know, continuous integration? Are you doing continuous delivery? Are you, you know, doing, um, you know, value, value stream mapping at all? Like. Um, often the, the biggest value that we get from this is just showing them this map of things saying, are you doing any of these or are you doing all of these? And if so, like, which ones are you having trouble with? And that just starts a conversation and mm -hmm. having the ability to just have one of these, you know, periodic meetings where you're talking about the past and talking about the future in the context of these capabilities and these measurements allows you to say like, well, maybe next quarter. Since last quarter, we had trouble with X, maybe next quarter, we're going to work on implementing capability number seven, right? And then next time we come around and have this meeting again, we're going to see if it worked. And it's just like a good framework for kind of tying all this stuff together. And so we do this with some teams. We do this with a lot of customers. Actually, I work a lot more with customers than I do with internal Google teams at this point. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it seems to work pretty well. So it's sort of combining Dora with this uh, back forward and around concept. Just like looking at the report, right? Is some there's a, a number of capabilities that are called out, like AI, continuous integration, code review speed, loosely coupled architectures, trunk based uh, development. You know, and it kind of measures out like effect on burnout, effect on job satisfaction, effect on overall like productivity. Um, you know, do you see there being like a really finite list of capabilities? Because I think the way that I've sometimes seen this presented is sort of like a broad, there's like a very like never ending list of capabilities. And sometimes it's hard to rationalize what are capabilities with what are buzzwords um, and things that are sort of emerging in the industry. Yeah. Um, the So the capabilities do increase over time. So if you look at previous reports, uh, you'll see the capability list actually does change. Um, and actually a fun little trick, speaking of AI, we did develop something called ask Dora. It's a little like AI bot that is cool. trained entirely just on the Dora report. So you can just go ask it questions. And so you cool. can say things like how many capabilities have been added between, you know, in the last 10 years and it will just list them all out for you. It's kind of fun. Um, really how we develop those capabilities is actually a little bit less scientific, like how we collect the data on the capabilities is like a social science problem. And we do all the right things with like all of the surveys and metrics and stuff, but like how we decide what goes into the questions that we're asking is purely based on our kind of experience as, you know, contributors within teams, as well as working with customers who themselves are, are dealing with these capabilities and just, what is it that people are talking about? What are they having trouble with? And it's, it, they kind of just arrive like that there isn't a secret recipe to determine like what makes something a capability or not um we try to make it abstract like not tied to a product or a tool or anything like that um because basically anything that can be implemented either on your own or through various vendors and it's the same like thing um, we mm -hmm. think of that as a capability uh however you can think of like observability as like you know a constellation of of many capabilities so like where yeah. do you break it down that's a little tricky um, and, and it, it's still a bit of an art right now. So there, there's not a, not a great answer on how you define specific new capabilities, but anything that someone can like answer, you know, a survey question specifically about, and it makes sense across many companies and it makes sense across many years. Uh, mm -hmm. the ones that kind of make it through that process, uh, we have a, a new thing we developed, I think last year where we, we call it Dora core, which is basically yeah. like when capabilities are like present enough throughout the years that we feel like they're pretty stable. 
we, we take them and like we kind of put them into this core thing. Um, and this is all on Dora.dev. You can, you, can, you can read about the difference between like the core and the non-core capabilities. Um, basically, we're, the ones who aren't in core, we're, we're trying them out through the survey to see if they are in fact like legitimate you know, core capabilities. And core capabilities are not only going to be more stable, more persistent, is the idea that prioritizing them are generally going to be higher, higher, higher impact with more consistency. Exactly. So maybe are the yeah. earlier part of your capabilities journey. They're the ones that tend to have an impact when it comes to, like when we look at the survey results, if you are doing the core capabilities effectively, you're more likely to have a better outcome. If you want to learn more about Dora, check out dora.dev. And you can join our community as well. There's a URL, dora.community, which is an actual URL. You can type it into your browser. And where we meet up a couple times a month to talk about Dora and how they're adopted uh, within communities and organizations. Uh, and then keep a lookout for Ask Dora. Uh, I call it Dora Bot. But we have an LLM that's trained on all of the Dora material for the past 10 years. And you can ask it any question you'd like uh, to better understand uh, all the material within, within the Dora reports over the years. Um, and don't forget to check out the Accelerate book as well. Um, it's, it's 10 years old and it still uh, rings true. If you're looking to advance your CICD practices and get Dora metrics automatically through that tool, uh, check out C2.ai. We will help you set up your CICD process to automatically collect and search and report on the Dora metrics that come out of your CICD practices. And then you can use those and compare them with the word of your team to understand how to continuously improve over time. I want to say a big thank you to Steve from Dora for joining us and we'll see you soon.